Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, this lecture is about uh, cylindrical coordinates in the uh, three-dimensional space. It's part of the um, uh, advanced mathematics course uh, presented on unizor.com. That's where I actually suggest you to watch this lecture from because the lecture contains notes and the whole course contains lots of problems and exams for registered students, etc. All right, so previous lecture was dedicated to Cartesian coordinates in the space, in the three dimensional space. Now, today I will just talk about another system of coordinates. Uh, and uh, it's called cylindrical. Now, why do they actually invent different um, coordinate systems? Well, it's because certain properties of certain geometrical objects are easier to express in different coordinate systems. That's it. And I will just make a couple of examples at the end of this lecture. So what is cylindrical um, system of coordinates? Um, we can approach it as follows. First of all, we have to have a reference plane in the space where we will establish polar coordinates. Now, on the, sur uh, on, on the plane, polar coordinates are defined by um, the uh, origin, which is called the pole, then the polar axis, fixed direction on the, um, on the plane, and then any point is characterized by two things. Number one, the distance from the origin, which is rho, and an angle from um, polar axis to a ray which connects center uh, the pole O with our point. This is angle phi. So these two characteristics, an angle which is called um, azimuth, a polar angle, and the distance from uh, the origin. So that's how we can define any uh, position on, uh, on the plane. Now, how can we extend it towards three-dimensional space? Well, basically the same way as Cartesian coordinates on the plane were expanded into Cartesian coordinates in a space. We just add one more axis, which is a perpendicular line which goes through the pole O. It has a positive direction and we will also call it Z exactly the same way as in the Cartesian coordinates. And all it adds up to this picture is that I can actually take any point and then projection to the reference plane can be defined by these two coordinates, rho and uh, phi, the distance and uh, the angle. And then I will add the height of this uh, projection. It's positive if it goes towards positive direction and negative if it goes to a negative direction. So three coordinates, rho, phi, and z, are defining a position uh, in the space. It's called AP, which is projection. So, again, what's required? A reference plane on which we establish the polar axis and um, perpendicular to it, um, it's called longitudal um, axis. Uh, usually it's uh, pictured as a vertical axis and the reference plane is usually horizontal so if I will use z-axis or vertical axis it's still the same thing as longitudinal longitudal yeah I think that's longitudal whatever um, axis and in the reference plane uh, we will have um, the polar angle sometimes called azimuth and uh, the distance from the row, uh, fr from the um, pole A of the projection our, of our point onto the reference plane. So from every point we can going to 
its projection and then establishing rho and phi, we can obtain coordinates. And from any coordinates, we can actually construct whatever the point corresponds to these because we can always, using rho and phi, uh, uh, construct the point uh, AP and then perpendicular to it and, and, and we will use Z to establish the position of A. So that's basically, that's basically all about cylindrical coordinates. It's again one-to-one -one correspondence between all the points uh, in the three-dimensional space and certain ranges of these parameters. Now, what are the ranges? Well, rho is it's a distance, so it's always positive or equal to zero if we are talking about the origin itself. And by the way, for every point on this z-axis, on the vertical axis, um, rho would be equal to zero. And everything outside, obviously, will be positive rho. Now, the angle, now, obviously, points on this line, the polar axis, and the plane which goes through this z and polar ax axes um, for these phi is equal to zero for all other phi would be positive counterclockwise and it's less than 2 pi or 360 degree now i put less there uh, greater or equal here but uh, strictly less here because I don't want to include the 2 pi, since 2 pi would be exactly the same as 0, so it would not be a one-to-one -one correspondence. So, uh, and z, z has no restrictions from minus infinity to plus infinity. So these are uh, the, um, the restrictions on the coordinates. Now, as I was saying before, what's interesting about other systems of coordinates, not Cartesian, is that certain properties of certain geometrical figures are probably a little bit easier to express in these coordinates. And um, let me just explain uh, this uh, using some kind of an example. Okay, my first example is a side surface of a cylindrical, uh, of a cylinder, side surface of a cylinder. So this is my reference plane. Now this is my O. Now it would be like this. I'm talking about the right circular cylinder its base sits on the reference plane and its height equals to h and the radius is r so this is r this is h now i'm talking about side surface only only side surface well how can i describe using the uh, cylindrical coordinates all the points which are lying on on this side surface of a cylinder well if you forget about the basis if you just talk about um, uh, a cylindrical surface now out of these parameters which parameters can be anything well if I'm talking about surface of a, a cylindrical surface it means it's going up and down infinitely, so z has no restrictions. Now, the uh, rho, it's a distance, it's a distance from here, and it's always r, right? So, rho is equal to r. And phi also has no restrictions, because it can be from 0 to 360 degrees to 2 pi, uh, everywhere we will find the point on the cylindrical surface. So basically this alone defines cylindrical surface. If I would like also to have it restricted by two bases, I will have to uh, add additional. Z should be 
from 0 to h, right? Because the base, uh, the, the lower base restricts z from below, so it's not um, less than 0, and the upper base restricts from above, it's not greater than h. So if you add this, you will get exactly the surface of this particular cylinder with this particular height sitting uh, on, a, on a reference plane. But if you're talking about cylindrical surface, nothing can be easier than that. So that's why actually the whole thing, the whole system of coordinates is called cylindrical. Because cylinders are very easy uh, formulated using equation with these cylindrical coordinates. Now, if you will add uh, to this, uh, let's say, Cartesian system, and if you will put Cartesian system something like this, so this would be y, and this would be x axis, then all these points on the cylindrical surface, let's forget about bases for a while, it's those points which are equidistant from this zero, right? And if you have these two coordinates, then this distance is supposed to be always r. But if the coordinates of this x and 0 on this uh, Cartesian plane, it means that you know these are obviously right triangles, this one and this one. So x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And z can be anything. So basically this is the same as this. And this seems to be much easier, much simpler. So that's why cylindrical surface is better to represent, guess what, cylinders. <laughs> All right, another problem, another geometrical representation, and it's uh, cylindrical equivalent. OK, I'm talking about the following. So if this is my reference plane, this is my vertical z-axis. Now this is my uh, polar axis. So now we are defined completely, right? This is z, this is o. Now what I'm talking about is I will um, take a plane which goes through this axis. So it's basically perpendicular to the reference, obviously. So it, let's say, something like this. And obviously it intersects my um, reference plane at some line, right? So I know only one thing, that this particular angle within the reference plane is equal to capital Phi. Now, now the plane is actually infinite. I mean, it goes all the way. So my question is, how can I express, um, using the equation with these coordinates, all the points on this plane? Well, let's just think about it. The only thing which is actually restricted is an angle. Everything else, I can go up and down on this plane on, or further or closer to the point of origin. So there is no restriction on R, or on, on rho or, or, or Z. So basically this is very simple expression uh, of all the points lying on this particular plane. And again, whenever the angles are involved, let's say you have, I don't know, a motor which is rotating, the rotor of the motor actually is rotating, and you would like to express um, rotation, you usually express it in, in angles, let's say, certain angle per second. Because if you're talking about number of rotations per second, it's actually number of 360 degrees per second. So that's your speed in, in degrees or, or radians or whatever. Okay, and the, and the third example where I will relatively simply represent my geometrical object is 
is a cone. So again, we have some reference plane. We have vertical longitudinal axis. We have polar axis. And we have a cone which is standing on the reference plane. And I'm talking only about um, conical surface right now. So how can re I represent the conical surface? Well, points on the conical surface, on the side surface, I mean, um, are not restricted by angle because uh, whenever the angle is, we, we can always find the point there, right? However, the rho and z are definitely related because as as I'm moving upwards on the surface, my rho is decreasing, right? And uh, my z is increasing. So what's there? Um, what's their relationship? So this is Z and this is Rho. Now, if my cone is given as radius of the base and the height, what can I say? Well, obviously these two triangles, the big one and the small one, are similar. So Rho relates to the R this is R and this is Rho as this catheters to this catheters. Now this catheter is H minus Z and the big one is H. So that's basically an equation which completely describes my conical surface here. I mean I can express it slightly differently I, uh, for instance, I can say that Z is equal to uh, what? H minus H rho divided by R, right? From here. H rho divided by R, Z minus, right, that's what it is. Or we can put H out of the rho divided by R. Now, indeed, if rho is equal to capital R, which is here, then z is equal to zero, because we are here on the base. And as z is increasing, rho is decreasing, rho is decreasing, so we are subtracting less and less, and at the very top, rho is equal to zero, so the z is equal to h, so that's the correct formula. So this is the formula which describes my conical surface. Now, if you would like to restrict the side surface only to this particular cone, you obviously has you obviously have to put a couple of more restrictions like this. Z cannot be below uh, zero or above h. So again, this is a description of a conical surface. It doesn't look very complicated, but if you would like to make this into, let's say, Cartesian um, equation, that would be much more complicated. I mean, if you, wish, if you wish, you can always try to do it yourself. What would be the correspondence between x, y, and z uh, on, on the conical uh, surface? Much more complicated than this. All right, so I was just trying to make a few examples where um, conical uh, sorry, cylindrical um, coordinates are used and um, no, they're not used as much as uh, Cartesian coordinates for many different reasons um, but they are used in certain cases um, well, that's basically it I mean, what I suggest you to do is to do some exercise, for instance in case of this or in case of a previous problem with a cylinder, try to express the same uh, relationship between Cartesian coordinates as you have just expressed the uh, cylindrical coordinates equation. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.